One side says an important milestone has been passed in securing rights for trans people. The other side say it is a dark day for women's rights. This evening, MSPs voted in favour of changing the way a person can legally change their gender on their birth certificate. At the moment, a person must prove that they've lived in their new gender for two years and have a diagnosis of gender dysphoria. The bill proposes reducing this to three months, removing the need for a diagnosis and and lowering the age limit from 18 to 16. It is a contentious issue, even within the SNP. Seven of its MSPs voted against the bill, and one minister, Ash Reagan, even resigned, saying her conscience would not allow her to support the changes. That made it the biggest rebellion against the Scottish Government since the SNP came to power 15 years ago. Our political correspondent, Lindsay Bewes, has this report. For these trans rights campaigners, change has been a long time coming. Six years on from it first being proposed, legislation making the process easier for someone to change their legally recognised gender is making its way through Parliament. For Ellie and many others, it'll make a big difference. This means that, that you're able to you know, live your life as who you really are and have the documents that match that and reflect that. The reforms include removing the current requirement for a medical diagnosis, reducing the time applicants need to have lived in their acquired gender from two years to six months, and reducing the age limit from 18 to 16. But the changes have also raised concerns for some. These campaigners say they're worried about the impact on women's rights. So in effect, it means that any man can declare that he is identifying as a woman and try to claim the rights to, of access to services and spaces that are specifically designed for women. And divisions are clear within Parliament too. The Community Safety Minister Ash Reagan resigning in a letter to the First Minister saying her conscience will not allow her to vote for the legislation. In response, Nicola Sturgeon said at no stage had concerns been raised with her. It's not uh, for any First Minister on a daily basis to check if a minister is going to comply with collective responsibility. Inside the chamber, the Social Justice Secretary defended the bill. Helping one group to better access their rights does not mean diluting or diminishing the rights of another group. Uh, we've set out why the bill will not change the provision of single-sex services, prisons or sport. The legislation is backed by Scottish Labour. It is my view that delays to the legislation have allowed a vacuum to develop and people to interpret the bill as something it is not, to reach wrong or unproven conclusions about what its impacts may be. But the Tories largely voted against it. But it is crucial, absolutely crucial, that we get this legislation right but the SNP government need to start listening to the legitimate concerns of women and the Scottish public. So far, there is little evidence that they have done so. There was also some dissent from the SNP's backbenches. The earth goes round the sun once a year. Days are shorter in winter. These are facts, whether we like them or not, and we have to accept them. And as I understand it to be a fact, there are two sexes, male and female. You know, and one of the anyway, bill's supporters had warning, this warning. warning. This cannot end up a dog's dinner of a bill which simply divides people and fuels the othering of anyone. Four, five, At nine, decision time, the legislation passed. Is yes, 88. No, 33. And MSPs will face a final vote in the coming weeks. Lindsay Bewes, BBC News, Hollywood. Well, how will these proposed changes affect trans people? Caitlin Rose Collins is a dementia nurse and trans woman, and she joins us now. Thanks very much for your time, Caitlin. Have you legally you. changed your gender? Um, yes, I'm in the process of my last stages of my transition. Um, and once that happens, then obviously I will be going for my certificate to change my birth certificate. And how do you think these proposed changes will help people like you? Well, I think it's going to make people a little bit more settled in who they are um, and understand that obviously we fight for our rights just like anyone else does. Um, it takes a long time and I agree that we should be who we are. Um, and with this bill now going through, I think will help a lot of people in my situation that um, may not be as strong as I am or as strong as I have been 
to fulfill who they want to be. One of the areas some people have concerns about is the lowering of the age from 18 to 16. Um, from your experience, do you have any concerns about that? Um, I think it's up to each individual. Um, in my own experience, I knew since the age of four um, that I was in the wrong body. Um, obviously, that would have been the 1980s. And growing up in a small village, it was quite difficult with a one parent family. Um, so I had to sort of gradually become who I am. And it's taking nearly 35 years to now be who I am. And I'm now at the last stage of my transition. And in terms of changing your birth certificate, why is that so important to you? Um, I will always appreciate who I used to be because, as I always say, if it wasn't for that person who I used to be, I wouldn't be here now, Caitlin wouldn't be here. I just think it would be easier for us having our certificate with our name, as Caitlin Rose Collins, it will help in future for, obviously, I'll be getting married next year to my fiancé who stood by me through my five-year transition. And I think it would just be a lot easier to just place my new certificate down as Caitlin Rose Collins, ready to be married. Do you understand concerns that some people have expressed that perhaps making this easier will mean that some men will abuse this and will access female spaces? What do you say to that? It's quite a difficult question to, to answer. Um, you would hope and pray that nobody would abuse any kind of system or anybody um, for, their, for their own sake and, and, and use somebody else that wants to be who they are, like I am, who I have fought for five years, proud to be who I am. Um, you just wouldn't want to think that anybody would want to use um, any sex or gender for their own for their own purposes it, it's got to because there's a lot of people out there that generally are who they want to be and i am one of them okay caitlin thank you very much indeed um for speaking to us on the nine um listening to that was lucy hunter blackburn from the edinburgh based policy analysis organization murray blackburn mckenzie who opposes the changes and she joins us now thanks very much for being with us lucy and um, we just heard from caitlin there she's a dementia nurse she She's getting married. What's wrong with someone like Caitlin having an easier system in which they can change their gender? So it's it's not as simple as saying that people oppose the changes. What the argument has been all about is about a process, a proposal for reform, which many people are very, and I think you heard it in the parliament today, across the parties and from people who voted for the, change, the, the bill and against. It's not the proposal to reform or to simplify, it's a very particular way that the Scottish Government has approached it. Can that you explain that then? Ex concern. Explain that to us and to our viewers about the particular aspects yeah. that you have concerns about. So what we what is underlying a lot of the concern is that it's not clear whether a person getting a gender recognition certificate, whether that changes how they're treated as a, whether as a woman or a man under the Equality Act. And if you hand out a great many more gender recognition certificates and people change whether they count as a woman or a man for the Equality Act, really most particularly, then that begins to have an impact on women's experiences in uh, measures of measures that protect us from discrimination, that allow us to have single sex services and spaces. And it's that very particular point, the mm. relationship with the Equality Act, on I which a lot of this hangs. Well how do you know that? Because, I mean, this is a very small proportion of people. The NHS estimates 0.5% of the population are transgender. Um, so why why do you think that, you know, what proportion of that do you think will abuse these changes? Where, where's the evidence? So I think that the argument always keeps coming back to abuse, but it's not really the core argument that women bring to this is that single sex spaces and services matter for our safety, for our privacy, for our dignity. And already we can see that uh, people providing these in hospitals, leisure centres, have become very uncertain about their ability to do that. But why are they uncertain? The because, I mean, I don't want to explain the law to you, you're a lawyer, but are there not provisions within the Equalities Act where if there were particular circumstances where women did feel uncomfortable with the trans women, that there are provisions in place in law to protect them? 
Right, so I'm not a lawyer, I should say I'm a policy analyst, my background is an analysing it and, uh, and explaining policy, but in this area, it matters because there are these exceptions for some things like single sex services, but people have become already very wary of using them because they are worried about the effect of gender recognition certificates already. If you put out a lot more gender recognition certificates, they're going to become more worried about using that. But also other parts of the Equality Act don't have these sorts of um, measures that uh, that, that, that give you some exceptions. They are just, as soon as you change, if you change your sex, you will become eligible for single sex and uh, anti-discrimination measures. So the government is in court in two weeks time to argue that a, a person with a GRC that designates a female should have access, be able to benefit from measures put in place to help women who have, uh, in terms of discrimination in appointments to public boards. So the idea that there is no relationship between a gender recognition certificate and the Equality Act and how it works day to day for women isn't sustainable. And But this is quite easily fixed, to be honest. There mm. is a very easy way yeah. to get past all this. Well, well, what is that way then? Be interested to, to hear what the solution is. So it is uh, this uh, the thing, and you heard it today in the debate, I thought it was really interesting to hear from right across the chamber and from people who both supported the bill today and who didn't, that a lot of them feel that if you could clarify the relationship between the Equality Act and the Gender Recognition Certificate, okay. you, could, you could solve an awful lot of this. So a very simple amendment to the bill that simply says if you have a Gender Recognition Certificate, it doesn't change if you count as a man or a woman okay. for the purpose of the Equality Act. It would okay. solve a huge amount of the argument. Okay, Lucy, good to get your thoughts. Thank you very much indeed for being with us. Thank you.